going to read from 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So as you have a gift, as God gives you a gift, we are to minister it to one another as good stewards of a manifold grace of God, as we had talked about previously. Spiritual gifts are an extension of the Holy Spirit himself It is an act of grace that he gives you and I a spiritual gift. Well, over the span of the many years, I've taken the opportunity to participate in spiritual gift inventories, assessments. How many of you have ever taken a gift test to see what your spiritual gift might be? And I've, I've done that over the years. I've, I've done it. Uh, there was a, a season in my life where I did it every year to see if the Lord was really growing some of those gifts within me. And sure enough, about four or five years ago, I found out that there was one particular gift that was growing within me that surprised me. And it was actually the gift of giving, the gift of generosity. The further I got away from my school debt, the more generous I became. (laughs) It's amazing, right? When you turn your finances over to the Lord and he wipes out your debt, how much more he can give you the gift of giving and being generous. It's possible that some of you have experienced that gift of giving. And so... Um, those uh, increasing gifts over the past several years, it kind of depends on the context and the people that I was with or working with. Depending on the circumstances, God was growing certain gifts within me. Also, surprising to me, some of the, the gifts that I thought that I was strong in were not as strong as they used to be because God was using me in a different way in a particular season of my life. So, what is your spiritual gift? Is God growing certain gifts in your life? Maybe you have multiple gifts. Now, kids, even adults, like last time, uh, if you want to draw or doodle or make an image of something having to do with a spiritual gift, something that promotes a spiritual gift, I want you to draw that, and if you can, give it to me at the end of service today, uh, or get it to me at, later on in the week. You can scan it, email it to me if you want. We'll put it on my office door here at the church. We have three so far from the last time that we shared together. Two Sabbaths ago, we began our two-part sermon series on spiritual gifts. We learned what a spiritual gift from Scripture would be. Spiritual gifts are freely given. You don't pay for them. There's something that's given by God through the Holy Spirit, and it is an extension. This gift is an extension of the Spirit Himself in order to build up the church and glorify God. So the spiritual gift is for glorifying God. And we were left with a verse in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, do not neglect the gift that is in you. So now, what do we do with these spiritual gifts that are coming from God? Do you know your spiritual gift? Can you finish this phrase for me? You either use it or... Oh, okay. There's a lot of you who have heard that before. You either use it or lose it. Is it possible to lose your spiritual gift due to a lack of use? The Bible gives several examples of spiritual gifts that God is trying to give his people. 
And you may have some of these, such as the gift of healing. Healing helps. How many of you love to help? You don't like the center light, but you like to be behind the scenes and doing things and helping others. Some of you may have the gift of hospitality, welcoming people, letting them feel warm and welcome into your space. How about the gift of wisdom or the gift of discernment? Has God given you the gift of discernment? How about artistic communication? Thank you, niece, Sydney, for your gift of artistic communication, maybe through drawing, the arts, music, poetry, something like that. Has God gifted you with artistic communication? Some of the gifts uh, assessments that I've come across include other gifts like celibacy. Think about that one. Talk that one over Sabbath lunch today. The gift of celibacy. See what kind of discussions come up from there. How about the gift of mercy? Wouldn't that be great? To have a gift of mercy to share with others who need mercy. How about the gift of languages? It's easy for you to pick up a foreign language and be able to speak and interpret in another language. There are other assessments that will include gift roles, like the gift of teaching. Right? Certain people will have to fill in the roles of the gift of teaching. Or how about the, the role of shepherding and leadership and evangelism, just to name a few. The gift assessment that I have here today lists about 22, 22 spiritual gifts. And if you sign up later today or email me, letting me know that you want to take the gifts, uh, spiritual gift test, You'll take that, that, this uh, spiritual gift test. It can be either online, I can email it to you, or we can do it in person. And there's about 22 gifts that could very well be identified in your life. But there could be more gifts than just the 22 in this particular assessment. And that's because we don't want to limit the Holy Spirit. The Spirit gives the gifts. He gives it as he determines and how much of that gift, the measure of gift, he determines as well. And he gives it to the one who believes. He gives it to the one who believes. Now, we need to keep emphasizing that spiritual gifts originate with the Holy Spirit. They do not originate with you. They're given at his discretion. They're given by his measure as he determines. And those gifts are ultimately for the glory of God. That is a spiritual gift. So please, open your Bibles now to Acts. Acts chapter 1. This is a time where if you're multitasking, let's go ahead and focus in on on what God has right in front of you, which should be the Word of God. So please open your Bibles to Acts chapter 1 and through the the whole book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. We have quite the journey of spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts among the early Christian church. And we'll glance at a few of these just in the beginning chapters of Acts. I found this to be very fascinating this past week as I too journeyed through the book of Acts with the spiritual gifts in mind. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, we have the promise from Jesus to the disciples that the gift of the Holy Spirit will be given to them, and then you have to wait for that gift of the Holy Spirit. And when you do, you will be given the opportunity to be a witness, to be a a type of evangelist for Jesus. So in other words, wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life before you go out witnessing. How many of you know of someone who has gone out witnessing or evangelizing without the power of the Holy Spirit? It's kind of dangerous, isn't it? If you're out there witnessing and sharing about Jesus without the gift of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus says, wait, 
wait where you are, wait for the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit will give you the ability to go out and be a witness in, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the world. Acts chapter 1. Go to Acts chapter 2. Verses 1 through 12, the promise of the Holy Spirit is evident. The disciples of Jesus were given the gift of languages. They were able to speak in a specific language such that the hearer could hear the good news of Jesus. That is the gift of languages. To be able to speak in somebody else's dialect, somebody else's language, in order to share the good news of Jesus, to to give them encouragement in Jesus. That's the, the gift of languages. That's Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 3, Peter and John are given the gift of healing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's pretty amazing. Gift of healing. And later, Peter exercises the gift of preaching. The gift of preaching. Preaching. That's Acts chapter 3. How about Acts chapter 4? Peter and John again, they're arrested. But when they're released, there were some who exercised the gift of, do you remember this story? The gift of prayer. Powerful prayer. Such that while they were praying, what happens to the, the space, the room around them? Do you remember the story? It shakes. It shakes. Somebody must have the gift of prayer. How many of you have determined that you have the gift of prayer? I, it's very possible that when you pray, the room shakes. Something shakes, right? When you pray. That's Acts chapter 4. How about Acts chapter 5? The unfortunate story of Ananias and Sapphira reveals how Peter used the gift of, can you guess? Discernment. The gift of discernment, Ananias. Why has Satan filled your heart to lie, Peter says? Discernment. I wonder if anyone here has the gift of discernment. Chapter 6, we find the gift of helps or service when certain people were neglected in the food distribution. Men were chosen to make sure an injustice within the community was dealt with and corrected. It's very possible that God wants to give you a gift in order to deal with an injustice within your community. This is so that the Word of God can continue to be proclaimed. Again, the gift of evangelism and preaching. That's chapter 6. Acts chapter 7. How about Stephen, the martyr? Using the gift of speaking. And when Stephen speaks, is it, his, is it for his own glory? <laughs> it's not for his own glory. If it was for his own glory, you would think that he'd want to live. But what happens to Stephen? He gets stoned. He's going to use the gift of speaking even if it kills him. Why? For the glory of God. The spiritual gifts are all about the glory of God. That's Acts chapter 7. How about Acts chapter 8? Or, yeah, Acts chapter 8. This one is an unusual one. We find the potential abuse of a spiritual gift. Did you know that spiritual gifts can be abused? Simon, the former sorcerer, becomes a believer in Jesus, but... When Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them what? <laughs> he offered them money, saying, give me this power also. Oh, Simon, you became a believer in Jesus, but when you see the power and the miracles that, that God is giving to others, you, you covet that power. This potential abuse of God's Spirit is riddled with covetousness, greed, selfishness. Simon, this is not about you. The desire for the gift was not to glorify God, but to glorify 
self. So it seems that we need to be careful with these spiritual gifts, that we do not glorify self and abuse these gifts that God is giving you. Now, there is a slide that had two columns. One says talent, one column talent, the other one gifts, or human talents and spiritual gifts. So if you can imagine a list of human talents on this side and a list of spiritual gifts on this side. One researcher claims that the spiritual talents can be inherited from your forefathers. So you might have a talent that was passed on to you from a generation to uh, another generation. Whereas, over here on the spiritual gift side, those gifts or those talents are given by the Holy Spirit. Do you see the difference? Possibly. We can debate this. That's okay. That's number one. Number two, human talents can be present from natural birth. Like, You kind of grow up and you just kind of begin to have a talent. And uh, maybe the talent to sing or the talent to write, uh, the talent for craftsmanship, that, that can be from the beginning of your natural birth. But spiritual gifts are given to you at your spiritual birth. When you give your life to Jesus wholeheartedly, the Holy Spirit begins to gift you with spiritual gifts. You see the difference. Human talent, spiritual gifts. That's number two. Number three, God-given human talents are actually given to all of humanity. All of humanity. There are some talented people out there, wouldn't you know? Right? There are talented people out there. But spiritual gifts are God-given to members of Christ's body. They're given to members of Christ's body. Number four, talents, human talents are for human activities, whereas spiritual gifts are for the ministry of the church. Number five, human talents can be operated independently of the Holy Spirit, but spiritual gifts are dependent on the Holy Spirit. You see the difference? That's number five. Number six, human talents ministers primarily on a natural level, whatever becomes natural to you. But spiritual gifts ministers on a spiritual level, a spiritual level. Number seven, human talents, effects are usually temporary and finite. They kind of fade away. But a spiritual gifts, the effects are eternal and infinite. You see the difference? But here's the most important one out of the two columns of human talents and spiritual gifts. Number eight, human talents end up glorifying self. Whereas a spiritual gift does what? It glorifies God. Hmm. There are differences just between talents and gifts. And I hope that you can contemplate these differences and see how God is calling you into a deeper experience with Him through using spiritual gifts. This potential abuse of gifts is all about self rather than about God. But then there's also this issue of passion. What are you passionate about What spiritual gift could God be asking you to use for His glory? And then even what attitude do you bring with the spiritual gift?
Do you want something? I'm, I'm Gabriel. I'm Dennis, nice to meet you. Look, I've got a job to do, so if you don't mind. I should get some help around this place. Begging for years. Did Mrs. Smith tell you I was coming? Who is Mrs. Smith? The lady who works with the volunteers. I, I told her that I was interested in working with the greeter ministry. Well, well, a real live volunteer. I've been desperate for help. Um, I I've never, <laughs> I've never volunteered before and I'm actually kind of new to this church, uh, but I love meeting people and, and I'd like to help out. I was wondering if you could show me the ropes. Sure, sure, it's pretty simple. You see the stack of bulletins? As people come walking through that door over there, everyone gets a bulletin. When the bulletins are gone, you're done. Was Dennis the guy in the blue shirt? Did he have a spiritual gift? Did he have a human talent? <laughs> Turning people off, maybe, bringing people away. Uh, was Dennis passionate about his, his job at church? He wasn't passionate at all. You see, God may be giving you a gift, but are you using that gift within the passion that he has also given to you? We'll talk a little bit more about this, but let's go ahead and go back to the video. and Let's do a retake. Gabriel? Dennis? <laughs> I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. I've been expecting you. I'm glad you came a few minutes early. I always like to go over a couple of things with the volunteers. I want you to feel comfortable with what we do. Well, I made this little card that highlights the four steps to being an excellent greeter. I use the acronym WARM to help us remember the four points. The W stands for welcome. Some people think that the main purpose of a greeter is to hand out bulletins, but that's not our primary purpose. The most important thing we do is give everyone a warm welcome, as though they were coming to visit us in our own home. But in this case, we're welcoming them in, into God's home. So smile and make eye contact. I like that. The A is for awareness. It's easy for us as greeters to get distracted. We start talking to friends and we forget what our primary purpose is and that is to be aware of the guests that are coming through the front door. Try to learn people's names, and don't ever ask, hey, are you new here? It's better to say, I've never met you before. My name is Dennis. Good point. The R is for receptive. Your goal is to be receptive to the needs of the people who visit the church. It might mean spending a few moments talking with guests. You might need to guide someone to the restrooms. If they have children, offer to walk them down to the children's divisions. I like to introduce guests to other members or the pastor. And M is for mission? Mission. I tell my greeters that we're the frontline members who carry out the mission of the church. The pastor once told me the first impression that a guest have of our church often determine whether they will come back. So we should never forget that a friendly welcome might open the door to people accepting Jesus. I never thought of that. People will begin arriving soon, so let me go over two last things. First, here are some guidelines for the volunteers to dress appropriately and to look their best. And here's our sign-up schedule. I'd love for you to have us for a couple of weeks. Are you game? I'd love to. Do you have any questions? No. Then let's go over and give everyone a warm welcome.
So what are some spiritual gifts that you might pick up from this renewed Dennis? What spiritual gifts do you think he might have? The gift of hospitality can be one. How about another? He's a teacher because he was able to teach and disciple a newcomer into a role, right? Did Dennis have passion? Yes. He had passion because he was ready. He was ready to receive Gabriel, right? And he was excited to to pass on this greeter ministry. And, And as we come out of the pandemic, I would hope that every church is beginning to relook their greeting ministry to welcome guests. Now, if you can think of somebody who is passionate and gifted at greeter ministry, who would that be? (laughs) That was a setup (laughs) ride. Sam, yes, Sam, you have that gift as well. Very good. Oh, it's we're. We, like many other churches, are in the midst of nominating season. There are ministries in the church that God may be calling you to be active in. But has God given you the passion for that ministry? Does it get you excited? Does it potentially give you a sense of joy and accomplishment if you serve in those ministries? And what is your attitude toward volunteering in the church? Is it one of humility or is it one of pride? What about uh, uh, volunteering in the church? Does it bring you joy or does it cause you to complain and be irritated? Is God growing a gift in you or, or are you just carrying on with your human talent? Perhaps God has called you to a ministry or a work that is not directly related to the church, yet builds up his kingdom. The work he has placed you in may not allow you to have extra time to volunteer in the church, but nonetheless, in the space that you work, you can still use spiritual gifts. You are still to build up the kingdom of God in the space that you work. And if God is calling you to be active in the church, It will be a measure of sacrifice. Isn't that not right? A sacrifice of selfish desires, a sacrifice of time, of energy, and even emotional energy. Yes, a sacrifice, but incredibly rewarding when done in the context of a biblical spiritual gift. You ready to serve? Do you want to serve? Aiden, are you ready? I hear you. Working in the church is kingdom building, not self-building. Now, how do you gain a more complete picture of your spiritual gift? So I invite you to email me or pull me aside, text me, Pastor Ira at dgsda.org. If you'd like to figure out your spiritual gift or retake a test, what what do my spiritual gifts look like? post-pandemic. Huh. What is God calling me to for such a time as this? And if you'd like to utilize the, the gift inventory that we have here at the church, just email me and let me know, and we'll set up a time, or I'll email you the inventory test, and we'll discover what God may be doing in your life today, post-pandemic. Contact me. We'll schedule your gift assessment. And then in the future, I hope to have a spiritual gift class where we cover all of these things. Can you imagine if all members of Downers Grove Seventh-day Adventist Church and any new members who want to come in were to take this spiritual gift class? What could happen here in this church? Are you excited? I'm excited. The story is told of a chaplain who once visited a soldier in an army hospital. The soldier, his arm was blown off by a mine. The chaplain tried to console the soldier by saying, I am really sorry you lost your arm. 
The soldier quickly sat up. He leans over to the chaplain. And he looks the chaplain directly in the eye and he says, Sir, I did not lose my arm. I gave my arm. I gave my arm. Some would consider volunteering in the church something that is beneath them as a waste of time, that, that's something that they would suffer a loss in their life. But service to a loving God is not a matter of losing something of value. Service to a loving God is a matter of giving something of value. And that is worship. That is an act of worship. So church family, would you like to be a part of God's mission in the church? Using the spiritual gifts he is giving you? Experience purpose and fulfillment in living for him. And can you hear the words that Jesus is speaking to you in the future? Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Are you ready to put the spiritual gifts to work? And for whose glory? For God's glory. Let us pray. Lord, you continue to be an amazing God, and we're grateful for these gifts that you're willing to give to us. Who are we to receive these gifts? But yet we know that this, these gifts are meant to build up your church here on earth. They're meant to give you glory and honor so that your character would be irresistible to the rest of the world. What a loving God you are. And Lord, we want to humbly come before you, asking for forgiveness of how we may have in the past abused these gifts, how we've made church, we've made life just all about ourselves. We want to turn away from that, Lord. We repent of that. We confess that. And so change us from the inside out. Help us to live for you using these spiritual gifts. Our lives have to be all about you, not about us. So, Lord, for everyone here, everyone who is a part of this worship service, even online, would you once again pour out your Spirit upon each one and give us an extra measure, a greater capacity for your gifts. It may be the gift of mercy. It may be the gift of prayer. It may be the gift of helps behind the scenes. Whatever it is, Lord, we are ready and willing to receive those gifts. So thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon this church family. And we pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.